What's up, everyone? How you guys doing? Uh, it's Friday, baby. You ready? It's party time. I got my party pal right here, old China now. You know what? Anybody who knows me knows I love Scooby-Doo. I love him. He's my high partner. He is here with me all the time getting high with Hollywood. He had a breakup with Shaggy, and you know what? I had to take him in. Uh, I guess Shaggy's trying to go the straight and narrow way, so he came to Hollywood, and Hollywood has put him right up here with the motorcycle madhouse. He is my new mascot. What do you guys think? He's sitting over here hanging on my microphone and stuff. Good old deal, man. Good old deal. You gotta love Scooby-Doo. They old canceling Peppy Le Pew and all that. Uh, yo, Samity Sam. Hell no, they better not go after Scooby-Doo. Hell no, I, I freak out. Freak out. Today, oh, today, oh, day, oh, day. Remember, this is the first segment of Motorcycle Madhouse Morning Mayhem. The second segment can be heard over on MotorcycleMadhouseRadio.com. You will have China Doll over there. Hey, how did that sound? Was that a good freaking commercial voice or no? Nah, I don't know. Uh, well, yeah, by the way, I don't control the ads on YouTube, guys. I do not control what they put on it or any of that stuff. I guess they had Mayan showing on my stuff. Here I am bumping on the guys, and they're showing their damn commercials. Uh, but anyway, I do not have any control over that kind of stuff, man. Uh I've been having people ask about motorcycle events, so I guess I'll cover some motorcycle events uh, that are coming up. Uh, later on, uh, the one case that we were following, uh, the jury has come in, and you probably uh, can guess what the verdict was on that murder case out, uh, I believe it was West Virginia. West Virginia. And then our crazy Aussies over there, they getting themselves in trouble, man. And now the cops are submitting a bill that uh, they're not going to like, man. They're not going to like. Uh, but let's go over some, uh, let's see here, go over some motorcycle events. This one is the American Legion. Lake Nona invites you to the Central Florida ride for the troops. March 27th, 2021. From 8.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. Austin Tyndall Sports Complex. You guys are actually lucky. Lucky I got you guys on the show, you know, promoting your event. This is in hopes that you guys get a hold of your national whatever it is. And tell them to lay off all the BS with not letting club members into the lodges. Hollywood's helping you. Now it's time for you American Legion writers to help me. Okay, let's get the word out, and I'll help cover your events and stuff. I'm bribing you here. I'm bribing you. Get on the National Post Commander and end this practice. This is the 16th annual Sencha Florida Ride. That's again March 27th. Uh, we got another one here. Let's see here. The 18th Annual Spring Fall Bike Show, and that is in Bador Parkway, Lebanon, Tennessee, at the Wilson County Fairgrounds. That's all by there, buddy. Uh, okay, I'm playing around. Okay, if you don't like it, go pull your pecker or something. Uh, that is the 18th uh, Annual Spring Fall, March 27th, 2021. Then we have the Spring Biker Bash. The Biker Bash. Redstone, Harley Davidson, Paige King uh, Johnson, and two others. Uh, Redstone, Harley Davidson. That is where where the hell are you guys at? Fifteen one hundred Highway Twenty, just off of Greenbrier Exit Three, Hunts. Will you lay in the bayam? Yes, those are some events for you right there, okay? Uh, I know I've been fa falling behind on some biker news, and I've been looking at some cases that I thought were very interesting and that everybody should know. Right, Scooby? Yeah, I think so, Scooby. They should know. They should know these things. So I'll get a couple uh, stories out to you today. Again, the one has to do with that Pagan's uh, 
murder case. Uh, you know what? I, I don't believe he really did it on purpose, man. I believe it was a situation where the guy started going for his gun and he pulled and he shot. He was alive when he left. He asked them people to get him help. Just didn't work out too good. But I guess they got something out in West Virginia that has to do with mercy. Uh, guilty with murder, with mer mercy or something. I've never heard of it. And, you know, but West Virginia is pretty cool like that, I guess. <laughs> never heard of it myself. Um, so, yeah, I've been covering those cases because I wanted to spotlight. Yeah, everybody knows I'm real big into... Uh, this anti-motorcycle profiling deal. And people need to understand how prosecutors act and how cops act. And we gave some pretty good examples the last couple days of that type of deal. One of them was Freddie's case. He's a pagan uh, an ex-national uh, for the pagans. He was uh, busted for the murder of that DJ and I really don't believe he had anything to do with it because, one, he was gone from the club. And once you're gone from a club, you're not going to order somebody in the club to do some stuff. The guy ratted him out. Or ratted on him to get out of his shit. So that was one case where now the prosecutor is being sued big time for a whole slate of stuff that he did. Misconduct, baby. And then we covered uh, Bandito's Jake Carzal's deal. Now, I don't know if he's still with them or not. I don't know any of that stuff. You know, I'm just going off of what he was back then. And we know that whole Waco debacle was pretty bad. We know the whole debacle. Texas has, you know, a long lineage of screwed up stuff. We covered uh, the Pike and Portillo deal. And uh, just yesterday, we uh, covered the former national president of the Outlaws, uh, Milwaukee Jacks situation. And in all them situations, they all had the common denominator. They didn't get information to the defense like they're supposed to. The defense, you know what they like doing is burying all the evidence they love burying it you know when a defense is supposed to get something they'll bury one piece of paper in maybe 50,000 deals 50,000 pages or something they'll just bury it in there we're supposed to have a fair trial and justice is supposed to be equal under the law we all know that's bullshit all bullshit and until the courts actually give a crap about justice, it's never going to change. This is the kind of stuff that one percenters and other clubs have to face on a daily basis. During the premiere of that segment, I had a stroke on there. And hey, everybody gets their opinions Everybody was asking why I didn't put him in timeout. Well, this ain't this ain't high school, okay, guys. I'm not gonna put you in timeout unless you're swearing and all that crap. Where during this, he was saying, "Well, why would anybody support uh, these gangs? All they do is crime." But well, one, he was probably a cop, you know, because I get them schlucks and haters all the time from the police and uh, department, the Leos on this channel all the time trying to debate me and they always get their ass kicked. But here's a reason why. Because I don't believe the propaganda. I actually look into the cases and see how things actually went. That's more than you ever do. I'm talking to this guy now. It's a 100% example of how these people take stuff straight out of the news and don't research it. Hell, there is a huge, huge media scandal happening right now. 
And this is the type of stuff these people listen to. They believe in 100%. But anyway, everybody knows about the Trump uh, call to Georgia and how everybody was saying, well, he was looking to get them to change the votes, blah, 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 blah. And this was from an unnamed source in the Washington Post. Washington Post didn't do their due diligence. They didn't go check this story out. They just let it out there. All the other media networks picked up on this. And spread the lies big time. You know, a lot of people are saying uh, it had something to do with the Georgia Senate race, whatever. I don't care. Come to find out a couple days ago. The Washington Post has to retract the story. Gave a huge uh, retraction, by the way. That it was all false. CNN only removed a couple words from theirs, but we know how CNN is. They're, they're the worst of the worst. When it comes to so-called media. I call them a satire media organization. They're just a joke. We all know what their objective is. That's the way it works. You know, journalists don't have any integrity now. But anyway, it's a big scandal. Everybody's talking about it. And they got egg on their face. And it's funny to me because they're all facing layoffs and firings and all that kind of stuff. So you have a person like that on your comment and on your thread that says, why would you support these gangs? Well, I'd support them any day over a Leo, for one, I tell you. But two, I would turn the question to you is, where did you come up with your information? Did you actually study what happened? Or did you go to, say, CNN, The Washington Post, MSNBC, for your information? Are you one of them type that believe every single thing you read? Now, I'm an opinion guy. My stuff is opinion-based has nothing to do with investigative type of stuff mine's opinion based and i i tell everybody all the time this you know what just because i say it ain't gospel go burn on your own go do your own research if you're intelligent you'll do that because you won't even take what i say as gospel so then why would a guy like this push that kind of narrative one he's a cop or probably has family members with cops, or he probably just sucks on their slongs, okay? Or two, he's just an ignorant POS. There is no other way of saying it. At least give a legitimate argument. See, I'm gr I love debating, but at least give a good argument. Don't say, you're doing this. Well, then he turns around and says... Well, aren't you profiling cops? Well, no, I ain't profiling. All them cocksuckers are, I, I can't stand them. And I, for one, think they need to be profiled because they hold government arrest powers. Those are the ones we're actually supposed to be profiling, not the citizens. But your mind's twisted, buddy. It's twisted into a bunch of mush. Because you can't understand something like that. You're the type of person who likes to be fed BS. Let's put it out there. Plain and simple. BS. You love this shit. You eat it up. And then you come on a platform and try to push those views. Well, it didn't go too good for you. You finally shut up. Because... Unless you got an argument against me, I'm going to tear your ass up. That's just like yesterday on uh, the second part of the show where we get freaky, okay? I do some phone scammings, 
And there was a article, and this, you know what, this has nothing to do with politics or anything like you freaking homes always freaking cry about. But it, it had to do with my representative of the 16th, Adam Kinzinger, that prick. Well, I like calling and bugging him on the show. Well, there was a story out about, you know, he's dating a Russian uh, model. And here these people are crying, Russia, 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 and they're giving them the schlong, you know what I mean? Anyway, well, he, you know, was texting her, sexting her, all these nasty businesses. And this is a guy who's supposed to be hardcore Christian and stuff. And he's doing one on the side, which, hey, I don't care, man. You want to get two pieces of muff? Go for it. Hey, it, more power to you. You're probably a lot of people's heroes. But don't go out there and talk it out of the side of your mouth. Like you're something. Don't do that. That's hypocritical. So I asked this young gentleman that answered the phone about all this stuff. Well, I didn't know nothing about it. By the time the end of the conversation is, he's slipping up all tongue-tied. Got him all messed up. Well, that's not what it says. Well, wait a second. Didn't you just say that you didn't know about this? See, that's how you hold people accountable. You challenge them. I don't care who they are. Challenge them. Get the information that will help you make a good decision. Don't be one of them people that just buy anything and everything. That's stuff I never understood, man. But anyway, let's go to some biker news. Prosecutor, West, uh, Marion, West Virginia jury convicts County Pagan's Motorcycle Club president of murder. Sad state of affairs. Uh, Marion County Pagan's Motorcycle Club of First Degree Murder with Mercy. That's the first time I've ever heard that. So if anybody's from West Virginia, can you please tell me what the hell that means? First Degree Murder with Mercy. That's according to Prosecutor Jeff Freeman. You know what that is, Scooby? I don't know who that is. I don't know what that is with mercy. The jury also convicted James Ryan Visson, 32, of malicious assault and conspiracy to commit that crime. The trial lasted five days with the jury returning its verdict in an hour in a homicide of Lou Grab. Grab was uh, shot four times in the legs at uh, Vincent's residence of Prickett's Fort Row near Fairmont. Grab then was loaded into an SUV and dumped along the Pitch Gut Hollow Road, where he was found about an hour and a half uh, later. He died en route to Fairmont Regional Medical Center. If the guy really wanted to kill him, why would he shoot him in the legs? It was just to stop the guy. It was the schmucks that were supposed to take him to the medical center that actually put him on the side of the road, so why weren't they charged with murder? The one guy, malicious assault and conspiracy to commit that crime. He, uh, see how messed up things get? It really does. Four others previously were convicted and sentenced uh, on various felony offenses. Freeman's assistant, Joseph T. Hodges, also handled the case for the state. So this out of West Virginia, that is the case we've been uh, following. On, uh, and it has come to a conclusion. Now the, the smart thing would be to do is wait until all the documents come out where you can see everything, go through the case file, and then make a decision instead of just reading what this one uh, said. But of course, this was actually fact-based. This is what happened. This was a result with the jury's decision. It didn't give you any of their BS, okay, like a lot of these other reporters do with their opinion crap. We're going to go here to Canada. Sing it, Scooby. Oh, Canada. 
Lawsuit pulls back curtain on RCMP's witness protection program. That's the rat program for those that don't know what a witness protection program is. Alleges force failed to prepare family for new lives. Hmm, so it's the cops' fault. You know, what, do they have to retrain them from toddler age or some crap? I don't know. Uh, the Vancouver Bureau, Douglas Kwan. There is no question that Paul Deary has helped get criminals off the street. He delivered big time when he agreed to testify against four people accused of taking part in the execution of a man in Dartmoor, Nova Scotia. They were all convicted, but Deary, 55, says he, his wife, children, and grandchildren have paid a dear price for his risky work as a paid police informant. What is it? Does some people, like... Get in with these cops because they failed the exam and then all of a sudden they're paid informants. I don't get it. I don't get it. Why? So they get a free ticket in, in these witness protection programs? That's right. I should ask uh, Sammy to bull Gravano, you rat. There are now plaintiffs in a lawsuit against the RCMP and federal government. Accusing them of failing to provide adequate support as the family endured a mental health breakdown and loss of freedom stemming from their years in witness protection. Yeah, should have thought that before you ratted, jackass. Well, they failed to protect anybody's mental health or prepare any of them for what could happen or what would happen. Hmm. Really? What did you think was going to happen? They were going to treat you like a king? No, they're not going to do that. Uh-uh. Idiot. Did we know what 20 years of hiding was going to be like? No clue. Did they do anything to mitigate the damage to us all along the way? Nothing. Well, what do you guys think about who uh, hug on uh, cop speckers now? They don't care about you. So don't rant. Don't do it. You're hearing it right here. They don't care about you in witness protection. So is the latest case to draw attention to the secret world of witness protection and to raise questions about the RCMP's ability to help informants. Often former career criminals themselves lead healthy, productive lives after their snitching is done. I love it. At least the freaking uh, paper put it in there. They're snitching. A mission to the program is completely voluntary and available to anyone whose safety is at risk because they help police. Participation can last a lifetime and typically involves moving to another city or province, assuming a new identity, or both. The RCMP website says about $16 million was spent administrating the Witness Protection Program in 2019 to 2020. 12 people were admitted to the program last year. 21 were given an alternate methods of protection, which can happen if someone is, is inadmissible to the main program. And 19 to glide any form of protection. Ouch, $16 million you're spending on rat control. Hmm. The RCMP, of course, and the attorney uh, deny the allegations and say the plaintiffs knew what they were getting themselves into. Wow, once I agree with something, they knew what the hell they were getting into. Yeah, huh? What's, a, what's about uh, his little uh, deal here? What did he do? Uh, Deary and the RCMMP disagree when he began feeding the information to police. He claims it started when he was a teenager. Police say it was in his early 20s. For time, RCMP labeled him as a treacherous, saying they could not be certain of his reliability. Well, what the hell? You, you know what? Right there and then, everybody he snitched on should get a new case. Because he's treacherous. He can't be believed. That's most wrath, isn't it? Anyway. Ah, Oz. Ozzy, Ozzy. Hmm. 
WA bikey gang colors to be banned under bold police proposal to dismantle and destroy criminal networks. And I can hear it now! If we don't start getting along in the United States, this is what's gonna happen. Everybody's gonna be banned. I can see the comments now. I can see it. Well, I guess it don't matter when, you know, you don't wear your stuff anyway to a major event. I don't know. <laughs> Outlaw bikey gangs could be banned from wearing gang colors in public and subject to greater stop and seizure powers. Under laws proposed by police to dismantle and destroy WA's criminal networks. WA Police Commissioner Chris Dawson announced the reform plan on Wednesday shortly after confirming detectives had made a breakthrough arrest in relation to the outrageous killing of former bikey boss Nick Martin in a public crowded place. Oh yeah, cops already on these premiers over there. They up the asses. I have already commenced discussions with the Premier, the Attorney General, and Minister for Police to strengthen the laws concerning consorting and criminal association between gang members. Associates and people who professionally facilitate the way these organized crime gangs operate. We all gotta get along, Scooby! Scooby, we gotta get along! Or this is gonna happen. Tell them, Scooby, get along. We'll also be recommending to outlaw, to outlaw the wearing of gang colors and gang insignia in public. We'll also be recommending to strengthen the existing money laundering offenses and to broaden the stop, search, and seizure powers in respect to organized criminals. I don't know why they don't. You know what? In 85, the rock machine came about, and they didn't wear no patches. They only wear, wore rings. I think that's what they need to do in Australia. Really piss these cops off because they won't know who the hell they are. Put it right back on their asses. See how they like that one. Uh, the proposed laws follow police clamping down on organized crime in the wake of the public shooting of Mr. Martin. December 12th, with 136 search warrants issued since his death, resulting in 102 people charged and 55 firearms seized. Damn, I thought he only got shot by a sniper from Afghanistan, man. You assholes out there arresting everybody. Sad state of affairs, Scooby-Doo. Sad state of affairs. Yes, he's going to be a fixture on my freaking microphone now. I really like that damn thing. I you know what, Scooby-Doo? Me and you can get high, oh high, baby. Anyway, guys, uh, don't forget to follow us on the second segment. China Doll is right here. And right now, we're going to go have some fun for those on YouTube. Again, it's MotorcycleMadhouseRadio.com. Don't forget to subscribe. We love you. See you on the other end. <laughs>